So open for questions. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer. Yes. Victor, if you have some Humira, um, what would you recommend as complementary? Like in blood work and see where you are. Okay. So um, like uh, in general, that's what we do. There are only simple solutions, not okay. simple recipes. H2 blockers, if you're on those all the time, how does that affect the whole okay. and flora? So area? basically, H2 blockers, uh, they decrease the acidity, right? So they significantly impair your uh, gut microbiota, right? So number one, you're much more prone to histone growth in your gut, number one. Number two, what is known uh, also that your absorption of calcium and magnesium will be impaired, right? So long-term use of H2 blockers makes you prone to positive viruses. And also, H2 blockers, they decrease activity of your pancreatic enzymes. So, again, that's kind of thing. Get off from it if you can. If you, if you can, well, that's. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, probiotic uh, effective with H. pylori. I, I tend to get, in fact, I'm in one right now. Uh, it's a Saccharomyces boulardii. Saccharomyces boulardii. It's a uh, medicinal yeast, so very close to brewer's yeast, and it does work for H. pylori. So the clinical trials published, so you can find information about exact dose and how to take it. Yes. You mentioned that Solendap can damage the gut. How long could a person use the sulfasalazine and the Solendap, you know, solely to manage the inflammation from ankylosis? Well, uh, you can use uh, so both. It all depends on the side effects, right? So uh, we're using uh, sulfasalazine as a maintenance therapy for most of the patients with spondylitis who can tolerate sulfasalazine. So Sulindac, you can use it. It's among all NSAIDs, it's probably one of the most benign NSAIDs for patients with spondylitis, right? So saying that, I prefer to use it as needed. So that's my answer. But again, if you need it, you do your best. Thank you. All right, questions? Can you talk a little bit about diet and all of this? Okay. So, um, like I didn't put it because uh, the approach to the diet which uh, we use in our clinic is slightly different. Uh, I don't believe in universal diet. For spondylitis, it doesn't exist. So, we're proponents of individualized diet. So, how do we define it? Well, you define on uh, based on your food intolerance profiles. Right, so we're doing actually put it down profile in our lab, in our clinic. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole entity of so-called immunogenic foods. So these are the foods which drive abnormal immune responses, right? And uh, it's sometimes for a person who is not familiar with it, may be very confusing uh, for a number of reasons. So there are like 20 different labs doing food intolerance testing, and they're all using different approach. So there are labs using IgE. So this is kind of, you know, uh, allergy-based. Food intolerance. So there are labs using IgA, there are labs using IgG, there are labs using neutrophil activation, and so on and so on. So it's basically like an ocean, you know, you try to find the right route and it's not so easy. Uh, I've done a lot of research on food intolerance, we came up with a system based on IgG4, so we measure antibodies uh, against various foods and specific antibodies based on IgG4 molecules. So, and we have a pretty good correlation between food elimination and uh, lab results. So, uh, that's how we do how we do that. So, I don't believe in generic approach. So, because all human beings are different, mm -hmm. and so uh, if you start using generic approach, especially in patients with spondylitis, it's not going to work. Uh, uh, to just comment, uh, so if. Uh, you look at publications about various diets, for example, for rheumatoid arthritis, most of the trials fail. Like the main uh, trial, which was done in Stanford, they utilized Mediterranean diet, it didn't work. Uh, they used low, uh, so called anti inflammatory diet, it didn't work. Why? Well, because it's a very heterogeneous group of patients. So you can just put you know, all of them on the same diet, it's not going to work. Yes. So, uh, like me, I take so much medication that my doctor has. Well, a is also very similar to H2 blockers. It basically reduces your uh, uh, catechoic acid production. And so by doing that, it opens the gate for various bacteria from your mouth to your gut. So you're going to end up with abnormal microflora right away. 
So and long term wise you're gonna end up with what's the barosis is imbalanced, right? So and with the fact that insufficiency. So again, doctor physician, maybe you can adjust these things. Again, there's a room for everything, but again, I'm not a big proponent of usage. Uh, PPIs and proton pump inhibitors such as Meprazole for long term. Yeah, I'm on heavy dose, long term, been on it for a long time. Yeah, if you've got GERD, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Uh, there are some natural products for that, which are much, much better than, again, first of all, we need to find out why you're good. Right? So, but you can use betaine, so you can use digestive enzymes, you can use tripala, so this combination works in most of the patients. Unless you have vital hernia or something like that. Now, uh, we just want to get the So the leaky gut, is that just in the small bowel doesn't affect the large Well, typically, typically, so you have sort of correct, so uh, the main gut kind of battlefield for the leaky gut, it's uh, small intestine gut. Yes. And is, is diarrhea part of uh, the symptoms, or not necessarily? Yeah. Yeah, diarrhea is typically part of uh, abnormal microbiota, so I'm not necessarily leaky gut. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, diarrhea is a part of abnormal gut microflora, not okay. necessarily part of the leaky gut. I, I probably missed it. If you said there are ways or tricks to increase the absorption of the cumin and phosphorus. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yes, absolutely. So there's a product that's called biopirine. And oh, so, yeah, I've heard of that. So biopirine is an extract of uh, Indian uh, pepper, yeah. and it increases absorption of cumin and phosphorus. Okay. Questions? Uh, do you have any take on it? on uh, food intake with lectins and inflammatory? Uh, you know, it's a popular diet, so it's a lectin-free diet, right? So I have several patients in my practice who are doing that. I don't get much experience with it. So there are different diets right now. Well, yeah. but again, it's not individualized diet, it's just a generic diet. You know what works for you? Again, I'm not against it, you can try it, but. Have you prescribed off-label uh, Zelgans to any of your uh, AS patients that are uh, not I don't, like, I don't like using this product at all because if you look at the side effect profile, you know, the frequency of lymphoma is huge. The fre I'm sorry? The frequency of lymphoma oh, is okay. huge, so I don't think it's appropriate to use the drug at all. How does it compare with, with that in Humira Remicade? Much, much higher. Oh, really? Okay. So, uh, and I'm paranoid about tumors because I'll be also not patient my practice from tumors. So I don't know if it's going to be unless, you know, they can use me that it's worthwhile, but it's going on. Aside so, from that, do we have any data on whether it's working in our community? Uh, in AS, I don't have any data right now. It, again, if you look even at our late trials, it's very borderline. Okay. So I'm not very convinced. Um, so, again, uh, when you did it with biologics, uh, remember that all the clinical data was generated by Big Pharma. They weren't convinced that it's working well. So if you look actual, at actual post, uh, trial data, so it's not so convincing. So now the advanced application from the UK is showing that like triple D marks work better even than biologists. So I am not absolutely convinced that I will hope the future of therapy for RA or AS. Oh, I, I must have missed it. What is the bovine immunoglobulins? Bovine globulins is basically oral immunoglobulins which you take because uh, when you're dealing with chronic inflammatory conditions, when you're dealing with like leaky gut syndrome and bacterial blood growth, you mentioned all these conditions suppress production of immunoglobulin A in your gut. So it's kind of oral therapy to uh, reconstitute the, uh, the loss of immunoglobulin. 